and a very short time certain. In other words, the ability to do that specific thing was not only narrowly curtailed to a, an action, but you were only allowed to do it for a certain time, at which point the corporate charter dissolved on its own terms. And even if you ever did anything outside of the public interest, even if you were doing a specific thing that you had give, been giving your charter, and even if you were in the very narrow time window of when you were supposed to do it, if you were ever found to act outside of the public interest, what happened to your corporate charter? Terminated. Terminated. The corporate charter could be revoked. The point I'm making, folks, is that the history of this country, for the first 75 years, the corporate charter and the incorporation process was tightly controlled. Now, I'm not suggesting this was the land of milk and honey, because slavery existed, patriarchy was raging, the class oppression uh, of workers was at play. What I'm saying is that the instrument known as the corporation was appropriately controlled. And that's our own history. That is our legacy. We could do that again if there was only the political will to do it. And I also want to point that out to say, if it is true, and it is, that only the state government can issue a charter, and if that charter can be used to hold the corporation accountable and keep it subordinate to its creator, if that corporate charter then can describe what duties it can have, and if as I will assert, a corporation should only legitimately operate if it's acting in the public interest. Can you see that a corporation should be understood to be an entity that must be under the control of we the people? And so when the U.S. Supreme Court, in an act of supreme judicial activism, says, oh no, we think that a corporation should be considered a person with rights under the Constitution, it perverts this whole framework. You see, the idea of corporate constitutional rights or corporate personhood is not just a stupid idea, which it is. Corporate personhood is not just illogical, which it is. Corporate personhood is not just legally indefensible, which it is. Corporate constitutional rights is at the bedrock. It is a linchpin legal doctrine, not one law, not one court decision, a doctrine, a whole philosophy by which the ruling elite have created a legal system that they can then use against us. Because what really chaps my ass today is the fact that most of the harm and abuse that these large transnational corporations do are actually legal that we're told under their, our system. And I'm saying that any legal system that is perpetuating injustice is illegitimate itself. And the doctrine of corporate personhood is fundamentally illegitimate because we the people are sovereign in the United States of America. This is our country, it's our constitution. We intend to be part of a movement that's gonna take it back. That's what Move to Amend is all about. And I'm inviting you to join this movement. Peace. <laughs> all right, thank you. What I'm going to do now is pass around this petition. If you want to join and check this out, can anybody guess how many times the move to amend effort has actually been covered by the corporate media? I'll give you all a hint. It's the same number of times that the word corporation is used in the Constitution. <laughs> Zero. Zero. And so even without a single bit of coverage by the corporate media, we have 135,000 people who have already joined. So I'm going to pass this around and ask that you also join. I'm going to put this, Art, could you come and take this and start this one in the back? And as it comes around, uh, I'm going to ask this. First and foremost, if you don't want to sign up, then just pass it. I won't be offended. I mean, I'll be surprised. Could we have already signed up by email? Yes, but here's the thing. All I'm going to ask you is this. If you, in fact, uh, would like to not only sign up, but also be part of organizing a Move to Amend affiliate in Houston, Texas, please put an asterisk next to your name. And I will follow up with you to give you the resources to actually be part of that. Does that make sense? So if you've already signed up uh, and you just want to continue to get our monthly emails, don't sign again. If you've already signed up online and you're like, you know what, damn it, I do want to help form a Move to Amend affiliate, sign up again and put an asterisk. Does that all make sense? Now what I'm going to do is ask if anybody would like to ask a question. David? Yes. The, that um, affiliation process has already been started, actually. Yeah, You're looking right now. here. 
Right, and what I'm what I'm saying is, so I know that uh, is this Matt. Yeah, I'm Matt. Oh, hey Matt. Yes, uh, I know that Caitlin told me to, to look out for you. So what we'll do then is anybody else who's willing to help you do that, I'll pat. We'll pass uh, those folks along to you as well. Make sense? Sure. Because what we're trying to do here is actually empower and facilitate this as much as possible. So thank you, Amy, for pointing that out. Now, if anybody would like to make a comment or ask a question, just raise your hand and hold it up. Amy, one, Perry, two, just two? One. All right, Art, you'll be three. And before we do this, uh, I gotta ask, hey, David Wager, how much did I charge you to come here today? Zero. Zero dollars. Green Party, uh, Don, how much did I charge you? Uh, nothing. Zero. The reason I'm saying this is because, man, what's wrong? I'm back to Texas. Where, where are all the pat cowboy hats? <laughs> I don't understand what happened. Hey, you know what? There's a hat right there, David. Would you, would you grab that hat right there and toss it to me? Because you see, not only am I a lawyer, not only am I a lecturer, I need both of those. I'm also a magician because as you will see that both of these two hats are empty and I will turn them into money. Ah, that's right. We're going to do an old-fashioned pass the hat. My grandfather was a Baptist preacher, many of you know, in the spirit of free will giving. You know, I'm just going to ask that you make a contribution forever, to however much you're willing to or able to. And it, if you want to write a check, it should go to Democracy Unlimited. And if you would like to write a check but you don't have your checkbook, I'm actually going to let you know you can mail that contribution to P.O. Box 610 in Eureka, California, 95501. So I'm just going to put that out. And uh, ask Perry if you'd start that one in the back. Do you mind? And just pass that around. And as it goes around, I'll now go to number one over here. Amy. Uh, um, two things. Uh, first is there are a number of us who are going to be helping out the Occupy Houston event on the 6th. And Let's give them a round of applause. And I can't, I, I just got to say, how cool is it that somebody who's running for office for Houston City Council, Amy Price is helping to occupy Houston. Way to go, Amy! Occupy can occupy. The Occupy Together movement and Move to Men is a very natural fit. And are there, do you have stuff that we can take on the 6th? The, the answer is yes. Uh, so the question is, do we have stuff that we can take on the 6th? The answer is yes. Uh, and what that means is, I've got plenty of brochures here, and I'm going to ask folks to just take one and pass it, and I will leave all the rest with you, Amy and Matt, and anybody else who's part of that to take it. I'll also uh, ask if, if y'all would be willing uh, to take these constitutional rights for people, not corporations, to that event. And the last thing I'll let you know is this, Amy, and I'm very excited about this, and that is, check this out. I am in conversation with Callie Lazen of Adbusters right now. Callie and Adbusters actually put out the call to Occupy Wall Street. We are in conversation to bring Move to Amend ever more uh, into, we're like a hand in the glove associated with that effort. So we're, t like, so we're definitely already doing that at the national level. And for those of you who are uh, uh, already participating in Move to Amend, I want to let you know also that there are take action webinars that anybody can participate in. Today we had one on how to use elections to advance the uh, opposition to corporate personhood. And there's been so much interest on Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Everywhere, that we're having a special take action webinar next Tuesday on how to collaborate with and participate in a proper, respectful way with Occupy Together. So Amy, we're, do we're, we're doing it, and I'm so proud that here in Houston, y'all are asking for materials, and I'll give you all that you need. Oh, and these nifty, uh, these nifty Move to Amend uh, stickers that are very stylish. Uh, all the cool kids are wearing them. So uh, I want to make sure, Matt, that you end up with the, the bumper stickers uh, and the, 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 the 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 stickers okay are you the, you're right you're the you're the I, I'm, I'm one of them okay there, there are several people in this whoever group. right and, and, and that's the brilliance of the move to amend organizing is that it's self-organizing and we're just empowering at the national level what's happened you got a you got a second point the second point um i know a few people who are deeply progressive 
and are not on board with move to amend because they're fearful that the way, the mechanism of change that move to amend is advocating might be used as a means of suppressing freedom of speech. And I wonder what, you probably are familiar with this, you've heard this before, so what is the answer to this? Okay, well, first and foremost, I think this, that we have to recognize that the idea of freedom of speech comes because we, we, we believe that the Constitution does not create rights, the Constitution recognizes rights. Those are pre-existing rights. Sometimes they're called natural law rights. I like to say they're rights that come from, don't get alarmed, it's just one button. Can you see that? That's my belly button. If you're too, if you're too modest to check here in public, go home at night, check and make sure that you too have a belly button. And if you do, you have you, you, that means that you have human rights. And what I'm saying is this, Amy, only human beings have those rights, including First Amendment rights to free speech. The idea that a corporation can claim inherent constitutional rights of free speech is absurd. And I don't think that uh, it makes sense for any, any entity that is created to somehow claim that there are constitutional rights associated with that entity. Individual human beings have First Amendment free speech rights regardless of their position. You know, and I will absolutely support people who I completely disagree with having the free speech rights to exercise and to say what they believe. I do not believe, though, that simply because you've created a corporation, including a nonprofit corporation, that the nonprofit corporation can claim constitutional rights. And I'll point this out, Amy, that it's part of the reason why actually a lot of principled conservatives are joining the move to amend effort because we take a principled position. And it doesn't look like, oh, we just want to curtail corporate free speech rights, but we don't want to uh, address nonprofits or unions or so forth. I guess I would say it this way. I believe that the proper way to protect our rights is not with a legalistic framework, but by a vibrant social movement. You see, vibrant social movements are actually what make changes. Uh, and is how we can actually best protect ourselves. And lastly, I would say this. Does everybody know who Thurgood Marshall was? Mm -hmm. Right? Thurgood Marshall, of course, a very famous lawyer who went on to be on the Supreme Court. But I think he's probably should be most famous as the lawyer who argued Brown versus Board of Education that overturned the shameful uh, separate but equal doctrine that the court itself had created. It hasn't so, worked, though. We still have work. Well, uh, Fair enough, but what I would say is this. Do you think that uh, the, the, the Thurgood Marshall create, like, thought of a legal argument that nobody had ever thought of? Or, or instead, do you think that what happened was 50 years of organizing by the Anti-Lynching League and the NAACP and churches, remember, righteous anger? I mean, I guess the point I'm making is this, Amy, that at the end of the day, if we really want to protect uh, our free speech rights, we have to exercise them. We have to get involved and get active. And I think the move to amend effort is actually empowering of those movements because the way I do think actually that collections, including corporations and nonprofits and unions, can have rights, but those rights are what I would call statutory rights. In other words, they are subject to the political process, so we should get involved in the political process. Uh, but to think that, if we think that the best way to protect our rights is just to go into court, that is actually, I think, a losing strategy. Does that make sense? I try, I try to address it as honestly. That's the other nice thing about you know, being a green or a social activist, is that I don't have to, like, oh, I don't want to offend. I'm like, I'm going to tell people how I feel, what my position is, as clearly as I can, and try to persuade others. I see your hand. Let's go to number two.